What's up guys, Garrett with Self Taught Dev. We are back doing another assessment for you. So Pluralsight is free for April because of some stuff going on in the world. I don't think I can say the word without getting demonetized on YouTube. So kind of skipping around it. Anyway, I took the assessment already, but I hit go on the assessment before I hit go recording. So I didn't get to do the intro. So we're taking it again because you get two shots on the assessments here. So this is the JavaScript assessment. This is what I got last time, better than 57% of my peers. So hopefully we can beat that. If not, it keeps the highest grade. So let's do it. Start do over. It is a little slow compared to the LinkedIn assessments, I feel like, like the loading time. And the time on each question is vastly different. Like I've never seen a question with 160 seconds before. Um, so you are writing an algorithm to process audio that runs 44K times a second. There is a single section of code that you only need to execute if either a variable foo is assigned a value of true or a performance heavy function bar returns a value of true. You can optimize the, how can you optimize the following condition? If blank or blank, execute that. All right, so we need bar to run if it returns a value of true or if foo returns true. I think we just switch this, right? Because if foo is less performance heavy, then we want to run, we want to check if foo is executable first. Because if this is like performance heavy, if this takes like two minutes to run, which wouldn't make sense because we need this to execute a lot per second. But let's say it takes two minutes to run. When we say if bar, it'll take two minutes to decide if bar is true or not. Versus if foo takes 30 seconds, it do if 30 seconds or two minutes. So simply switch foo and bar to take advantage of the JavaScript short circuit. Um, cache the value of bar. Ooh, okay, that's some other stuff I didn't think about. I should have read the questions first, or the answers. Cache the value of bar in a variable. Well, set timeout to delegate the performance heavy function. Uh, I don't think set timeout's a good way to do it. Contain the code in its own function, foo bar. I think this is the best way. All right, sweet, so we were right, what's up? Ah, I bit my cheek, jeez. All right, next question. So, see, only like 50 seconds on this one. The following snippet of code produces an error. Why? Var a do, 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 for each function c. I don't think you need function right there. Console log c. So is everything matched up, right? Yeah, everything's got like corresponding pairs of stuff. The callback function must be on separate lines. No, that's not it. B is undefined when called. I think that's it, because like right here you're saying B 45 and then you're trying to pull out oh wait function c console log c ah i was not paying attention to the time wow i swear that skipped i swear i had like 20 seconds left or something all right anyway uh which snippet returns the following results console log foo show hello world hello world all right so uh we got 100 seconds on this one so var foo equals title world show return map function a hello plus this dot title. I don't want to click on that. Ooh. All right. Um, so this would, is this referring to title? Wait, this is referring to, what is this referring to in this one? I don't know. We're going to read the rest of these just to make sure. So how is this different? So map, doesn't map have like an implicit return? If you do that, an arrow function changes the context of, like the execution context. It does not create a new execution context. So I think it's this, I think it's the arrow function. Um, what is the difference between these two though? So in this one, we're just passing in A as a variable versus this one, we don't have A. What is A, is A defined in this one? I think it's this one. All right, sweet. So what is the correct syntax for using the function.prototype.call method with a string parameter? I need to learn what prototype does. I think it just like instantiates a new, or makes a new instance of an object, basically. I don't know if that's right or not. If that's right, let me know in the comments below so I know that I have a good grasp on what prototype, ah, on what prototype is. All right, um, method with a string parameter. Uh, what is the correct syntax for using function prototype call? method with a string parameter. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. This one is the right one. Okay, so it's C. Ah, dang it, it was D. Why is it that? Function called this, hello. I don't even, I've never used this before. I don't know what this is. All right, next question. 19 questions left? Holy crap, these are long. All right, given a class sheep inherit from class animal, 
What do you need to do before using this in Sheep's Constructor? Ah, I don't use objects that much yet. All right, although, or classes, yeah, anyway. Um, although you can inherit methods from parent classes, you cannot inherit the this object from the parent. I think you can. All right, using the super keyword to call the constructor, I think it's B. That's the longest answer, and I feel like super and this are related. Bind this when calling the constructor. That doesn't seem right. It just seems too short and easy. Nothing. It's fine to replace reference this similar to this in functions referenced to create an empty object. What do you need to do before using this in Sheep's constructor? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the super thing. What's up? All right. In the following code snippet, the console log statement gets called indefinitely. How can this be prevented? Let number equal zero, let console log arrow function, but console log number plus plus, set interval logger number one, so it's called every like tenth of a second pretty much. Uh, call clear interval logger number. That would work when it is time to stop the execution of log number. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's A. Remove number plus plus from inside the console log. That wouldn't do anything because then it just print out zero continually. Pass the condition to pass a condition to set interval to stop the execution. I don't think it has a condition where you can just stop the execution, does it? I'm pretty sure you have to reference the alert. Yeah, it doesn't. All right, uh, there is no return statement in the function passed to set interval, resulting in no exit condition. False, because if you have return here, it's still gonna finish the function. It's just gonna get called again after a tenth of a second. So it's A, right? Yeah, boom, next question. What up? All right, what will the following code return? Function square of n, n times n, 25, right? Oh wait, yeah, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right, geez, I had to count that out. Uh, oh wait, what will the following code return? Ah, trick question. It's not gonna return anything because there's no return statement, so undefined or null? I'm pretty sure it's undefined. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, given an array people, user one, user two, and an array friends, user three, four, five, what is the result of the following expression? Let our people friends. So this basically just joins the array of people with friends, but does it join it as a list? No, it, it would unpack the list. So it'd be user one, two, three, four, and five. But would friends be an array still? Friends would still be a list. So it'd be users one and two, and then the array three, four, and five. All right, assuming that Elm is a valid element object after the following code is executed, what prints to the console? Okay, var new event, new event build, element add event listener build, console log e dot type, so to log the type of build, which is a, okay, wait, what? Assuming that Elm is a valid element what, after the following code, what prints to the console? False, event, element dispatch new event. So it wouldn't do one of the, it would be one of these three on the bottom here. Okay, so. Are we checking for equality somewhere? Add event listener build. I didn't I didn't know what the event listener build does. All right, um, e, do, 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 return false. I'm gonna go with error, no, false. Dang it, build, huh. All right, I didn't know what the build event listener did, so. Easier question next, what's up? All right, a web page is behaving incorrectly. The issue is being tracked back to this script tag and the page's head tag. Uh, what is the most likely cause of the problem? Script document, get element by ID, the control, add event listener click, function, E. Um, there's no, oh, never mind. It's not an arrow function. Console, warn, clicked. Uh, can we just like copy this and inspect and then go to the Chrome inspector right here and then paste it and then execute it? Add event listener of null. Um, so let's do, what is a, how much time do we have? 30 seconds? All right, cool, give me an ID. So wrapper, undefined. So I'm not getting an error when I execute that. The event listener tag cannot be added before the page is done loading. Um, yeah, that could be it actually, because if it's running before the page is loaded, the target element does not exist when it's executed. That's the same thing, huh? The script tag is missing the type attribute. No, it's D, it's C. All right, we ran out of time, man. All right, given the following console log iterator one next dot value 42, which snippet will set up iterator one for the above behavior? New set, ah, this is stuff that I have a weak grasp on. Let set one equal new set, set add 42, const iterator set properties. Okay, so what's different in these? 
And those are the same, that's the same, the first line's the same, the first line, the second, 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 second. Const iterator one equals set properties, values, get values, all keys. So it's just this keyword right here we're, we're checking. Um, what snippet will set up the iterator for the above behavior? Console log iterator next value. I'm gonna go with B. All right, cool. What is the value of X after the following snippet executes? 10 questions left, what's up? Var X, Y equals 42. Uh, yeah. I feel like I can just look at it and figure it out, but this seems like a good, how much time do we have? 20 seconds? All right, cool. Undefined. Ha, all right, cool. Given the following results, my concat, hello world, 70 seconds. All right, my concat, my name is user one. My name is user one. Um, which function gives those results? Uh, arguments, join, space. There's no, nothing's passed in right there, huh? We need, what? Can you do that? I thought, okay, cool. I think it's dot, dot, dot arguments, right? It's one of these two. It's this one because there's spaces in between everything. So the join, whatever you have in here, that's gonna, that's how it's gonna join it. So if you're saying join it with a space in between each thing, so it'll grab my, add a space, grab neck or name, grab space, grab is, grab a space, and so on. Um, what occurs when the script tag is present on a web page at the top of the body tag and contains an SRC attribute? The page continues to be parsed while the resource at SRC is loaded asynchronously, as, uh, asynchronously but nothing is executed. No, that's not it. Um, the page is loaded asynchronously and executed. Par page parsing is paused. No, page parsing is paused. No, page par uh, the page continues to be parsed while the resource is loaded and executed asynchronously. Yes. No. Page parsing is paused. Oh, okay. So when there's a script tag in the head and it loads the script tag, it pauses the page rendering. And that's why you have the script tags in the bottom because you want everything rendered first. Okay. How can the response text of an X H XML HTTP request, Ajax, be call, be accessed without uh, adding an explicit event listener for the load or load end events? God, I'm getting tongue tied on this one. I have no idea what the right answer is on this. I barely know what this is saying. Jeez. How can the response text of an Ajax request call be accessed without the load or load in event listeners? There is no way, no, it's this one. This is the longest one, so I'm probably gonna go with that because I don't know what the answer is. But storing the result of open in a variable and calling send with a callback. I mean, you could use a, you can use a callback function because that would only execute when you get the stuff back, right? Calling window.response text to parse the response that came with the object. I don't think that's it, because you wouldn't, without the event listeners, you wouldn't know when you get the response back, right? So this would cause like an error, because it'd be like res is undefined. That's not true, I'm pretty sure it's A. That's kind of cheating, right? Like you're using another event listener. I think it's A. Ah, dang, it was the longest one. Dang it, gotta trust what my first instinct is. All right, anyway, given the following function calls, sum one, two, three, returns six. Sum blah returns 10. Which implementation of sum will return six and 10 respectively? Return arguments, reduce, ooh, reduce. Ooh, I need to learn more about that. I've, I've seen like one video on that. Previous comma current. Okay, so what's different in these? Sum the args, is it just the parameters you passed in? I think it's this one here then, because this one's passing in all of the args. This one's just setting the args or an empty list, right? Because that's like saying default I use an empty list, but that would only accept like one parameter or one argument. Actually, maybe it's this one because of, no, because that'd still be passing in one argument. I'm pretty sure it's this. All right, cool. Because this one would be, you'd pass in all three or all four arguments and then you'd unpack it. All right, what it will the following code evaluate to? Function foo in return args zero time args zero. Foo five. Uh, this will return, and I think it's an error, right? Can you just use arguments like that? I don't think that's a thing in JavaScript. I don't have time to Google it. Yeah, it's gotta be error, because this would be, I don't know, I think it's error. No, it's 25, really, why? Arguments, zero. 
Okay, so I guess you can reference like all the arguments that are passed into is in right there. So it's saying all the arguments, the first one, so it gets five, and then the same thing there, and it does five times five. Okay, gotcha. What keyword does a generator use to send a generator value to the caller? Lambda? No. Return? Yield. I think it's yield. I have never used a generator before, but I'm pretty sure yield is what I would use if I was going to do that. So, boom. Finish. How would you do? Way better than the last time. All right, 188. I'll take that. I'm almost an expert in JavaScript, and I'm not an expert in JavaScript at all. Uh, and, and you can retake it a month later. So, Hope this helped you out, guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you know which ones I got wrong, let me know in the comments below. I might just go to review questions because it looks like they tell you here. So that'd be awesome. And if you want to come hang out in the Discord, talk tech. Discord link's in the description. I review resumes. If you need your resume reviewed or anything like that, it's going to be in a video if you send it to me, though. So I'll block out the contact info. And all my socials are in the description as well if you want to connect on LinkedIn or anything like that. I will see you next time. Peace. Round. One.